Hi Capricorn, welcome. So Capricorn, this is going to be your reading. I'm gonna start with the spiritual general messages and then I'm gonna go into the you versus them love reading. My readings are timeless. So I just trust that whenever you find this, that's when you're meant to hear it. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it, Capricorn. I wanna say that the energy to me uh, feels so good. Feels so, so good. And I'm really hoping that this um, is translating into what you all may be feeling during this time frame, um, despite what you have going on, which I think is interesting that the first card that I got out right, right when I was talking about how good it feels is the card of complexity. That doesn't sound like a very feely, feely good like energy. But for some reason, I just feel like you taking everything with stride or you know, if you're dealing with something of a complex nature, I feel like, you know, you kind of backing away from the issue of it or not really letting it impact you or get to you in the way that maybe it typically would or, you know, and maybe the way that somebody wants you to behave or take it. Um, this card talks about irritations, frustrations. It can be a very complicated um communication may be complicated as well you might have some complicated communication going on or misunderstandings going on to me this card reminds me of like retrograde energy which i don't think we're in a mercury retrograde right now but that's kind of what it reminds me of um but on the plus side this is a very transformative energy it is a very educational energy it is a curious vibe okay so I feel like, you know, <laughs> Capricorn, you're one of those signs who doesn't really mind a good puzzle to figure out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Capricorns are, I don't know, just naturally good at like figuring things out, figuring people out. I'm getting the term psychology, psychologist. Some of you may fall under that realm quite literally for your job or your position, but I feel like you're one of those signs that's observant enough to psychologize other people, similar to like Aquarian energy, especially for my Capricorns that are on like the Aqua Capricorn cusp, okay, or my January Capricorns, I should say. All right, so let's see what else we have coming through. You have the card of friendliness, love that, laziness. And innocent. So isn't that funny? Because that's what I was just saying. I feel because I feel you being easy about things. I feel like you not taking things to heart or not being too difficult on yourself, right? And here you have the card of <laughs> I have to laugh. I don't know if you can see my dog. I don't think you can. He's playing with his toy <laughs> right next to me. Anyways, sorry if you can hear him. Uh, you have the card of friendliness and laziness, which I love this depiction of laziness because it's like the positive side of that, like just chilling, you know, nothing's bothering this person. He's unbothered, right? And um, next to the card of friendliness. So it's like the more unbothered you can be, the happier you'll be, the more patient you'll be, the more people want to be around you, right? And the more you get all rigid and frustrated and opinionated, the more you give off that energy, the more people don't want to be around you, <laughs> the more you close yourself off, so to speak, from your feel good energetic pathways. So you also have the card of innocence, which this card um, obviously talks about innocence, but to me it talks about wisdom as well. Like you know, seeing things through the innocence or the lens of innocence, the lens of a child, the lens of rose colored glasses. So I feel like you might be in this stage of your life or just in this moment where you're just like, yeah, I'll figure it out later. Like, I'm not gonna stress that or not my problem, you know, like, um, especially if you've been somebody who like has been owning other people's problems, like trying to figure everything out for everybody else. And now it's kind of like, you're kind of stepping away from that, I feel, at least for this time period. Um, and just like, yeah, no, not really, you know? Isn't there power in that though? There really is. 
especially for us problem solving zodiac signs because i'm i'm a i'm a january aquarius but i'm kind of close to the cusp and i have a lot of capricorn in my chart i think i have like two or three placements uh predominantly a mercury um so like yeah i think just by nature of the intellect of capricorn energy you're just a natural problem solver right sometimes it's actually easier for you to identify the problem rather than the i don't want to say rather than the solution but yeah sometimes sometimes it maybe even makes you a bit pessimistic or you know um cynical in a little bit in some ways um but that's all right you know I feel like that's kind of part of the nature of a Capricorn, but it's not often that you kind of let yourself off the hook and you just say, okay, not my problem. Um, so good for you. Let's see what else we have coming through for Capricorns. Why do I want to sing Vanilla Ice so bad right now? <laughs> if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. TJ flipping resolve it. I don't know if that's what he actually said. Ice, ice, baby. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> oh my god, don't click off. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> the wheel, six of wands, ace of pentacles. The wheel is in reverse. Very interesting. So the wheel in the upright to me is about good fortune, um, karmic lessons, um, divine timing. In the reverse, it's kind of like a repeated pattern, a lesson not yet learned, maybe even feeling misfortunate, which is interesting to me because it's paired with the six of wands, which is about overcoming, you know, your difficulties. This is the card of feeling accomplished, of success, and then you have the card of Ace of Pentacles, which is like a new manifestation, a new beginning, right? So when I put this together, I feel like Capricorn, this is literally talking about like you overcoming your own patterning or your own behavior patterns, you know, something that you may have really struggled with or something that made you feel really unfortunate or misfortunate and like finally getting into the space where I got this, you know, like I am moving forward. I am getting over this. I am becoming who I want, etc., etc. And because of that, it's like there's a little reward in this for you, like a little gift here. Um, something tangible that you can see, taste, touch, and feel coming through. Um, so I freaking love that. Let's go further and see what this is about. What else for my Capricorns? Six of Cups, the Ten of Swords, King of Wands in the reverse, and the Tower. Now, this is interesting to me because the Six of Cups talks about the past. It can also talk about past relationships or children. Um, and then children. Why do I say it like that? Children. Children. <laughs> Anyways, Ten of Swords next to it <laughs> uh, i'm sorry i can't stay serious uh ten of swords next to it and which is all about <laughs> oh you got the giggles today anyways um which is all about endings exhaustion betrayal king of wands in the reverse is a very temperamental energy it, it you know, King of Wands in the upright is somebody who gets the job done. They're very motivated, a very action-oriented, successful person. In the reverse, this is somebody who's defeated, who has maybe even let their ego get the best of them, who can be kind of tyrannical, angry, um, you know, definitely speaks of frustration, right? And then the tower, which is very unpredictable energy. So I feel like in the past, Capricorn, some of the misfortune or things that have occurred may have had you in this space of just feeling like completely defeated, like you're not in charge of your life, you're not in charge of your universe, 
you know, and may have made for a really unstable environment, okay, or created instability within your life. So I had a ripple effect, okay? Some of you are still feeling this ripple effect um, to some degree. But I feel like you're, even it, for those of you who are still kind of in that space, I feel like you're kind of taking the stance now, though, after you've kind of exhausted all other options to be just like, you know, F it, like, <laughs> you know, uh, what else can I do? I've tried everything, nothing's working. And, you know, a lot of times that is what it has to come to for us to surrender, for us to release the imaginary control that we never really had to begin with, right? It's like we almost have to exhaust ourselves before we're finally able to let something go. And I feel like that is maybe what happened here or that's what you've been succumbing to is like our ego wants to make us try all of these things you know to get our way or to push something through only for it to frustrate us some more and so I feel like this is the time period where you let that go and it's just like a sigh of relief once you realize that you know, you holding on tightly to something on an emotional wavelength in the thought space was creating a lot of the struggle and tension that you were feeling and therefore creating instability in the life that you're living or the relationship you're having or the work environment, however this is relating to you. And it's like, as soon as you just kind of, not my problem, I let it go. I surrender. I surrender, which also means I have faith. I surrender my need to worry because I have faith that it will all work out. There is power in those words. There is a lot of power in that. So let's see what else we have coming through. What else for Capricorn? King of Pentacles in the upright, that's what I'm talking about. Ace of Cups came out in the reverse. King of Swords. <laughs> the Star. So, interesting. Here's the King of Pentacles, which is representative of your energy, Capricorn, whether you're male or female, because it is a general read. And he's looking right at the Ace of Cups in the reverse, okay? So to me, the Ace of Cups in the upright is all about like love, falling in love, feeling a lot of emotion, right? In the reverse, it's kind of like love lost, but I actually got the words, no love lost. I don't know if that means something to you, but that's what I heard. No love lost. Maybe it felt like you were losing something or that you were losing a part of yourself only to come to the realization that you are love. You cannot lose love because you are love and you never lose sight of yourself. You never really lose yourself. You can forget who you are from time to time. You can get lost a little, but you're never really lost, right? Because you take you with you wherever you may go. So it's like this illusion of the mind, right? Now, some of you um, may have actually been through, though, and this is a caveat, a small group of you, an actual loss of like a person or a job, this is not predictive, this would have already happened. Okay, and then that case, the message is that you are going to overcome this. It may not feel that way, it may feel very unstable, it may feel very scary, it may have hit your ego pretty hard, it may have had you questioning things, but they're saying, relax, give it time, be kind to yourself, spirit is with you, there is no love lost. We're eternal. Okay. And that this will 
work itself out. All right. For the rest of you, or should I say in general, I feel like King of Swords and the Star is like getting your ish together almost. It's like, all right, I'm going to get serious about my healing, my goals, my growth. Like I'm going to shift this into my development, right? And how am I going to do that? I'm going to spend more time doing things I love. I'm going to be kinder to myself. I'm going to be, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to myself. I'm going to see myself as my source sees me, which is unconditionally loved. And that is the secret to your success. Let the judgments go about yourself. Let the coulda, woulda, shouldas go. I know that sounds easy, but it's actually kind of hard. But when you get to this point where you cannot suffer enough or you have tried everything that you could try, you will naturally bounce into that emotion of release. Release equals relief equals faith. Then you go into hope and hope manifests a new pathway for you. So they're saying, whatever you're going through, Capricorn, keep the faith, keep the hope. This is working out for you, even if you can't see it. Just give it time. So let's see what the guidance is then for this part of the reading. And then we're going to go to the love reading and see what else we have coming through. Guidance for Capricorn. You have the card number seven. My thoughts join a powerful swirling vortex of attraction. In the same way that the law of attraction is responding to the thoughts, words, and actions that you're offering here in your physical reality, the law of attraction is always responding powerfully to your vibrational reality. When the law of attraction, the universal manager of all vibrations, responds to the clarity of vibration offered by your expanding inner being, the result is a powerful swirling vortex of attraction. So just remember, uh, Capricorn, the universe is always responding to you. It is responding to your thoughts, your words, and your actions. No prayer goes unheard. Wow. Very interesting reading. We're going to go into the love portion now. I am going to fix my cards up right good, and I'll see you in just a second. Stay right there. I'll be right back. Welcome back. All right, now we're going to go into the You versus Them love reading. And I got my little special guest here. Ducky you. Kiki on the slide. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, okay. Uh, let's get into it. You versus Them. I'm going to go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. Keep in mind that it is a general reading, so the roles may be reversed. Feel free to flip it if you need to. It's often going to be about an intimate partner or an ex, but really it could be about anybody in your life, so keep an open mind. And here we go. You have the card of going with the flow, which is so crazy because in your spiritual reading, I was talking about like chilling out, not making it your problem, relaxing, releasing, right? And so you kind of got the same message here. This person got the card of conditioning, which is kind of the complete opposite of where you're at. This is a very stringent, restrictive energy. Could be that this person has been through a lot of conditioning um, as a child or by society, or that they, um, you know, maybe have done that to themselves unnecessarily. So let's get into it and see. We are going to look at recent past, what led up to the now, how you both feel and see each other in the present and most likely outcome. So most recent past for Capricorn. Most recent past for Capricorn. And the high priestess, the world. And temperance so in the recent past here I feel like Capricorn the high priestess to me is one of my favorite cards this is the intuitive one this is the psychic of the tarot deck right 
And it's also someone who can keep a secret, okay? Sometimes very secretive energy. Um, the card of the world is like success to me, completion. Um, it is the number 10. Then you have a card of temperance, which is alchemy. It's being able to take the good and the bad and make the best of it. So I feel like some of you have been really maybe growing spiritually or tapping into your own intuition or having your own spiritual growth. Some of you are downright psychic, intuitive, maybe having ESP or deja vu, things of that nature. Um, but I, I feel like you've come full circle either way. And temperance to me is somebody who's kind of mastered, right, like their emotions, um, through their own spiritual growth. So I feel like I'm dealing with some Capricorns that have really come a long way or are pretty deep into their own spiritual journeys. Um, this connection could have sparked that Capricorn or somehow been connected to that, but take it as it resonates. <clears throat> Let's see, this person's recent past, the page of wands. Ooh, look at all these reversals. Justice, three of swords in the reverse, the queen of pentacles in the reverse. So the page of, this is the page, right? Yeah, the page of wands to me is like a carefree, free-spirited energy. But it could also be, um, the first words I got was inconsiderate. But I, I was going to say impulsive. So, you know, take what's resonating. Um, the Justice card is things being fair, things being balanced, right? Three of Swords in the reverse is kind of like the heart on the mend um, after maybe something devastating or a heartbreak of some sort. And then the Queen of Pentacles in reverse is interesting to me. In the upright, this is somebody who knows their worth, right? But also maybe a little bit closed-minded. In the reverse, it's kind of like, I've got the word humility or humbled, um, but also it's someone who's questioning their worth. So I feel like um, Capricorn, whoever you've been connecting with, they may have frivolous tendencies, you know, but I feel like they're trying to find their way or find their balance and are on the mend, quite literally, you know, from some things that have wow, tortured them. I wasn't going to go that deep with it, but maybe this is how they feel. And it's made them question their worth. You know, so they've been through something that uh, was deep. It's significant. Significant. So let's go into um, how you're perceiving each other then in the now. How does Capricorn see this person? What do they think about this person currently? King of Cups. Ah, way too many. <laughs> King of Cups. Okay. I still got too many. Oh, well. King of Cups, the Fool, Eight of Wands in the reverse, the Sun, and the Seven of Swords. Fake it till you make it is the first message that I felt from this card combination. And now I'm getting a song by Sasha Sloan. I'm way too good at faking it. I'm way too good at making it look like. That is a really deep song, by the way. Check that song out. <coughs> Some sort of faking it going on here. I don't know if like you see this person as somebody who's faking it or they're fake or whatever, or maybe you're faking how you're feeling. I'm not sure. Take it as it's resonating. But I, I being as it's falling in how you think about this person, I kind of feel like that's how you see them somewhat. The King of Cups to me is like a very emotional energy, and the Fool is somebody who's not afraid to take chances. Um, but I also feel like this untrustworthy vibe here, um, and what's interesting is it's paired next to the sun. Like, you can't ever trust, like, if this person is happy or sad or, I don't know, like, <clears throat> the eight of wands to me also is, like, no communication or misunderstandings, blocked communication, um, 
So you might have a bit of that going on. Who's faking happy? Who's pretending they're okay with something they're not okay with? I just cannot get away from that message and that song. She says, and I'm way too good at faking it. She also says, I'm way too good at pretending that you're the one. Babe, I'm already gone. Ooh, this is deep. Okay. So I, I just get in a general sense, by the way, like you don't trust something about this person. It's like, you know, too much or something or like something feels off about this to me where you don't really know like are they happy are they not happy like what's going on here talk to me like they're this could be how you feel I feel frustrated I feel frustrated with this person not gonna lie okay <laughs> let's see uh how are they viewing you king of pentacles eight of swords they, that's frustrating King of Cups and the Lovers. The first thing I got from this card combination is that you're making it all up. I'm not saying you're making it all up. I'm saying like from their perspective, like this could be somebody like that you would go to and you would say like, hey, I'm feeling like something is off with you. Is that the case? And they would be like, you're making it up. Like it's all in your head. You know, even though they're giving off that energy, right? So who's faking it? Like, are you paranoid or are they faking it? Like that type of thing. That's a very confusing situation to be in because it could be that you literally are misreading this person, but it could also be that they are not truly expressing what they have going on. And that's where the misinterpretation or miscommunication is coming in, I feel. Because this person sees you as somebody who gets too wrapped up in your head um, and maybe like you see things that aren't really true or aren't really there. It's funny because the Knight of Cups and the Lovers is here is also, which the Knight of Cups is like my card of romance and love. It's vulnerability. It's, you know, the Lovers is Twin Flame Soulmate card. So in this person's mind when they think about the connection like they may be in love or have a lot of love for you if it's not intimate and feel very connected to you and at the same time feel like they can't get to you or get that through to you and i heard preconceived notion like you have a preconceived notion that kind of blocks you from seeing that or their true intentions this is how they are thinking by the way not saying this is the truth i'm saying this is what they are thinking let's go into the emotional space and see how are you feeling underneath it all what does capricorn feel underneath it all nine of cups in the reverse not so great five of swords in the reverse, that's good. Six of Cups in the reverse. No! Ten of Cups. I gotta keep these because I feel like they came out all wacky doodles. One more. Really? Wow, there's the Six of Wands again. All these reversals. So the Nine of Cups in the reverse is feeling dissatisfied 
Uh, five of swords in the reverse is actually a good thing. In, in the upright, this is very vengeful, jealous, and spiteful energy. In the reverse, it's kind of letting that go. Uh, six of cups in the reverse is like letting go of the past. Eight of cups in the reverse is no longer working on something. And six of wands is success, overcoming something, which I think is fascinating because in the spiritual reading, it was about overcoming like a repeated pattern, uh, a thought pattern or a way of living or a way of behaving, right? And so here I can see clearly what that is in the heart space. It's like letting, you know, letting go of this dissatisfaction, this, uh, letting go of the past, letting go of the need to be right, letting the go of the need to continually push and work for something that's not working, just letting it go. And that's not an easy thing to do, but I feel you accomplishing that because the only way things are going to move forward for you, Capricorn, is to position yourself in that energy of no matter what, I got me. I got this, right? Even if you want to continue the connection, you cannot continue a connection with all this resentment, with all this baggage, with all this carrying and holding on to things. It will deteriorate. It will sabotage the connection. So if you can't let it go, you got to let go of the connection. Those are your choices. If you can let it go, then you can salvage it. But you don't get to hold on and not let it go because it will sabotage it. Law of Attraction will not allow it. It's got to be one or the other. So, let's see this person's heart space. This person's heart space. The star, the hangman. We have a lot of repeated cards. The ace of swords. This person is very hopeful, you know. They're seeing things from a different perspective. It could be because, you know, they're being pushed in that direction or your behavior is encouraging that or pushing them to do that. I'm not sure. But in their heart of hearts, the Ace of Swords is here, which is clarity. The Star, which is hope. And the Hangman, which is a different perspective. So they're getting clarity here, okay, that is changing their mind changing their perspective and they're holding on to hope hope of what let's see that things will move forward that there'll be progression that there'll be steps in the right direction that things are going to line up so let's see most likely outcome which can be changed by free will you're in the driver's seat not me uh but let's see two of wands ace of wands seven of wands in the reverse this is surrender this in the upright this is keeping your guard up this is not letting go this is not letting something down you know like not letting your guard down in the reverse it is the card of surrender Ace of Wands, Inspiration, New Beginnings, Two of Wands, right? It is once being stuck in a rock in a hard place and then making a decision here. And what is the decision? The decision is to let something go, to surrender, to trust, to go towards your passions, Capricorn. To get yourself out of this limbo uh, and I feel you breaking free of that. I don't feel you're in limbo at all, actually. See, because you've done a lot of work on yourself and you're learning how to let go and let God and go with the flow, to not fight battles that are not yours. And there's an act of surrender here, which leads to the Ace of Wands, which is 
uh, like a spark coming back, right? So let's see this person's most likely outcome. The fool in the reverse, ten of pentacles. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I thought of when I saw this card is not messing around. Actually, I got the F word, not effing around anymore. Um, so I feel like <laughs> if there's been that going on, I feel like this person's not messing around anymore. They know what they want. And I'm getting an Adele song. We could have had it all. So the fool in the reverse is not taking any chances. You know, um, I feel like this person is in this space where maybe in the past they took some chances that ultimately they didn't feel worked out in their favor or that were fair. Okay. They took the brunt of it. They took the hit of something. Okay, and now they're not taking chances. They're not risking this. Like, what, what is valuable to them is their stability, their network, their family. Um, if they have a family with you, then their connection with you, things of that nature. And I feel like with the Queen of Swords here next to the Ace of Wands, this person has given a lot of consideration, a lot of thought to what they want. Um, and... And there's something they're putting on the back burner as well. They're prioritizing something. They're putting something on the back burner that they were up in the air about because they're getting their priorities straight. That's what it is. They're getting their priorities straight. No longer indecisive. Putting something on the back burner and then going for what they want. Wow. Let's see what the guidance is then, the Capricorn. Super interesting reading. Uh, card number 35. I have the power to direct my own thoughts. Your thoughts do create the reality that you live. And one of the most exciting things about beginning the process of deliberately focused thought is that law of attraction will immediately bring you evidence of your improved thought. And while old patterns may be hard to break and you may slip back into old patterns from time to time, evidence of your effort will be undeniable to you. And before long, with much less effort than you spend trying to dodge negative conversations or train other people to be better, to treat you better, all of your relationships will improve just with your deliberate, focused thought. Card number 35. Woo, that was deep. All right, wow. I hope that reading resonated with you, Capricorn. I'm going to leave it there for now. Zodiac signs you may be connected with or have in your own birth chart. I have Aries here, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Um, let's see. Leo, Sagittarius, Aries again, and Scorpio energy, Pisces energy. Those are the predominant signs I'm seeing. Keep in mind it is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it did resonate, let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe by clicking the subscription button so that you don't miss out on any future content. Um, also check me out on Facebook. I do go live there as well. All of it linked in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube. Other ugh, otherwise, <laughs> wishing you the very best and until next time, my friends. Namaste.